Okay, today on the bench here we have a RCA co-pilot. This is a model 14T, turn the volume down here, 14T304. Um, it's a 40-channel uh, AM-only radio, and it's brand new, or new old stock, I should say. has never been used. I just took it out of the box. If I turn around here and grab the box. And the box is a little, I wouldn't say worse for wear, but it's been, you can see, opened and taped up a few times. But definitely brand new, power cords unused. The microphone, of course, is hooked up. Still has all the original paperwork, the mounting bracket. Yeah, and just from looking at it, you can definitely tell. Not a scratch on it. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's as new as they get. I mean, the chrome, you can see the mirror finish there. And I, I kind of like the, the looks of it because it's, it's one of those bare, you know, it's a basic, that glare is killing me there. Um, there we go. Try and block the light a little bit. Uh, you know, uh, make it simple, stupid. <laughs> it's probably the best thing I could say. Um, you know, AM radio, you don't need a lot of fancy features. Volume control, squelch, it does have, you know, one fancy feature here. It has a dimmer, which actually is, is nice. You know, that's nice because I'm one of those people, I don't like blinding, blindingly bright things inside my vehicle at night. So this is actually a very nice feature to add on a, you know, kind of a baseline radio. So, you know, you can turn, turn the, you know, the intensity down. And the nice thing is it doesn't just turn just the meter light or the display down. It turns both of them down. Uh, other than that, you know, ANL has a local and distant switch. Now all that does is, actually if I turn the squelch off, so you can hear some static there. You see this static completely disappeared. So all that is is just an attenuator. It greatly reduces the uh, the gain on the incoming signal. So you know if you're talking to you know somebody right in front of you and you don't want to hear a bunch of static and everything, you're talking to somebody that's really close to you, you turn that on it will block everything out except somebody that's basically sitting right in your lap basically which is great for if you're you know talking to the truck right in front of you or you know if you're in a convoy with your you know wife and a husband you stick it in local you won't have to worry about listening to a bunch of other jackasses on the radio <laughs> so um customer sent this in once all uh, one thing i do have to do is definitely clean the switches because when i first turned it on i didn't have anything and I just jiggled the CVPA switch and up oh, the light came on and it went back off and yeah I did, you know did this a couple times and then it finally stayed on so yeah the, you can tell it hasn't been used in decades because the the CVPA switch was is definitely oxidized um, so I haven't even had this open yet um, he just wants the electrolytic capacitors replaced and the transceiver alignment uh, no modifications once it left just as is which is you know a way a nice radio like this should should be you know should be left factory. Um, let me actually get uh, that unhooked. We'll just see what the receiver sensitivity is on this before alignment. Uh, let's see. Get the speaker hooked up here. Okay, check Cine, that's already on. Uh, I'd say right about point six seven. Yeah, point six seven. Yeah, 0.67 for a 12 dB Synod. So actually not bad, but uh, I have no doubt that will pick up pick up some with the uh, transceiver alignment. So there you go. There's the uh, beforehand. Um, and once I get done doing the alignment on this, I'll before I put it back inside the case, I'll uh, start the video there so you can actually see what the inside looks like before I close it back up. Okay, so you can see we got some tape on here to protect that nice shiny brand new bezel on here. 
uh, just completed the uh, replacing all the electrolytic capacitors and have done the transceiver alignment now. And like I said, I was pretty sure we could bring up receive sensitivity, and we did. We took this from a mediocre receiving radio now to a stellar performer in receive. It has fantastic receive sensitivity now. Um, there's a little trick to that with these chassis. <laughs> Once I got into it and started working, I was like, aha, this is one of those. Don't use, you know, don't go 100% by the alignment procedure. Now, for starters, this model radio, Sam's never made a specific service manual for this exact radio. But this, this radio uses the exact same circuit board that the 305 did. This is a 304. Right, let's see it under the tape. Of course, it's bare in the corner. This is the 304. The 305 uses the same chassis. Only real difference is... Yeah, bring the pic, find a picture of it. You can just see it has a couple extra buttons. Same amount of controls, just a few extra buttons. That's the only real difference. But if you follow the alignment procedure in this book, you're not going to be able to do this. So we have exact same setup. Speaker out to the communications test set, which is putting out a 27.185 megahertz signal, uh, modulated with a 1000 hertz audio tone, 30% modulation. So if I turn the volume up on the radio, you can see we have now a little bit better than 12 dB Syned, and we're down at 0 0.05 microvolts, which is minus 133 dBm. So we've taken it from, I think it was, what, 0.62 or, no, actually, I think it was 0.67 um, when I first started with it, before I did anything to it. Now, when I did the alignment by the book, um, and I've noticed that on this chassis, this is a CyberNet chassis, it's one reason, I'll turn the volume back down, it's one reason these things receive so good, is because it's a CyberNet, it's a, what I call an 050 chassis, you see the model number right there, PTBM 050 Cox, a very good chassis. But the factory alignment procedure on these is a little wonky, <laughs> in my opinion. When you do the alignment procedures on these, they tell you to... This transformer, this one, and this one are adjusted in the PLL alignment. And they'll tell you to you know put your oscilloscope probe on certain test points in here and peak each one of these when you're on those test points for maximum RF power, as shown on your oscilloscope. If you do that, you will not be able to get... 0 0.05 microvolt sensitivity, receive sensitivity out of this thing, you'll get about 0.5 if you're lucky. Um, now, it doesn't really affect transmit power. It does, actually. Adjusting these, all three of these also affects RF output power, but these radios make way more than enough power. These things will get up to, God, you can actually have to turn these down when I adjust them. So this coil and this coil here, or transformers, they were actually peaked, and then the cores turned back down because the power was up like around six and a half or seven watts, I think. So it's that they've been turned down to actually lower the RF power. So it's not like it won't make enough power. But if you peak these like the alignment manual, the service manual tells you, you're not going to get good receiver sensitivity. What you should do is when it comes time to do the re receiver alignment, adjust this one. Because in the receiver alignment, you normally adjust this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one for maximum voltage at your speaker. You're, you're checking, you know, volume. So if I turn the volume back up here, I switch over to voltmeter, that's how many volts there are at the, the speaker. So that's measuring the audio voltage. So, they'll tell you to peak it for maximum voltage. Well, I'm here to tell you, if you do only, if you align these per the service manual for maximum RF power with an oscilloscope, and then try to adjust the rest of these in the receiver alignment, you're going to end up with 0.5 or more microvolts of, for receiver sensitivity. Now, if you adjust, when you start the alignment, if you peak this one, this one, and this one for maximum audio frequency power, or audio power, then adjust all of these for maximum power. Then, there's one last thing you need to do. 
because when you peak this coil right here for audio maximum audio frequency, it's not going to be maximum received sensitivity using a Synad meter. There's actually going to be a lot of static, and actually I can show that. Push the radio back just a hair here, so we'll try and get it all in the camera shot. There, got the camera tilted up here. Okay, so I'm going to turn the volume back up. You can see there's our 12, almost 13 dB Synad. Now, if I go to alt voltage, I want to burn that up. Burn the audio amp up, we'll turn that down some. But if I peak this one for maximum voltage, now watch that, it's hovering right or close to 300. Right around there, which is now up right close to 400 millivolts. But now if we check our receive sensitivity, we can see we now have about between 9 and 10 dB synod. If you do the normal alignment, and then as the last step, adjust that last transformer right there for best synod, you'll get rid of a lot of that hash and trash. You can, I don't know if you can hear that. That's about where it was. Can you hear all that static? Now listen, listen how the static goes away. Now that that's just the that anytime the measurements get up so high it's auto ranging it'll keep auto ranging the audio level coming out of that speaker so right there god we almost got 14 db Just right there but you see how the the noise levels come down and you can it's a lot clearer the actual signal we're listening to which is what we want so there's just a little tip if you ever work on a Cybernet PTBM 050 Cox chassis, which is an AM chassis. They were used in lots of radios, including different, several different models of RCAs. But there you go. There's a uh, new old stock RCA ready to be put into service and uh, do some super listening. <laughs>